Today we will be reviewing the new ACL Swivel Lock Repair Implant System. The kit contains three 4.75 biocomposite swivel locks. One of them is preloaded with fiber tape to create the internal brace. There's a 4.75 tap to help prepare the femoral bone, and also a drill sleeve to prevent the ACL from winding up on the drill bit. There's a 2.4 cannulated drill pin, a passport cannula, number two fiber wire, number two tiger wire, and finally a knit and all passing wire. We chose a 2.4 drill to minimize bone loss. And taking a closer look at the 2.4 drill, we can see that it is a cannulated pin that threads into the drill in standard fashion. We chose a cannulated drill to facilitate passage of the knit and all wire, which is used to shuttle the internal brace through the tibia. Laser marks are placed at both ends of the drill so that when the guide is used, the depth stop will reflect 20 millimeters. Here we have a a uh, left knee specimen with an uh, ACL where we've made a proximal tear, the type 1 tear that we've reported on. Within 10% of the femoral wall is what we usually call type 1 tears. If it's within 25%, uh, that's a type 2 tear. And those are the ones we focus on trying to repair. So first things first, we're going to use the uh, shoulder scorpion fast pass. I've found that one to be the most useful for ACL repair. We're coming through a 8x3 uh, passport cannula, which comes in the kit. And we're going to come through it with a number two fiber wire. I also find that the fiber wire works the best with the round configuration rather than some of the tapes with the flats. Um, again, you can try which, what you like, but we put fiber wires in the kit. This is a number two fiber wire. We take our first pass as low as we can on the ACL in the anteromedial bundle. And then we're going to bring it back through the passport cannula. And now we've got a single stitch going through. One of the things you don't want to do is pull too hard on the ACL. You can see this one's nicely intact, but sometimes when you're repairing them, uh, the fibers are a little uh, loose, and if you pull too hard, you can uh, pull them apart. We're going to come back in, and now we're going to go st and stitch back and forth across the uh, ligament, creating a Bunnell-type suture pattern. And that's our first pass going the other way. You can see you want to make sure that you don't get tangled so when you lock it in there you go a little slow and if you see that you're caught up on your other limb you can always go in and uh, untangle yourself. We're going to come back the other direction this time and take a pass. One of the important things that you should try and do is feel the resistance on the needle before you buy it. And what that is doing is you're going to avoid coming through your other sutures. Uh, and transecting the suture that's already been passed, you'll feel the resistance from the needle. And so if you do feel that, stop and don't push through it and just uh, pull out and, and resituate yourself and re-angle your, uh, your, your next pass. And you can see as we're going up the ligament here, we're creating a banel type suture pattern going up the ligament. I call it porpoising through the tissue because I try not to come through the tissue in the exact same plane each time uh, in order to avoid guillotining between the two bundles. Another thing is as you get higher up the ligament, you want to angle your uh, scorpion as you pass so that you don't jam the needle into the wall. We're going to go back the other way. Uh, you can see we've already taken two two or three passes going up, so you can get quite a number of good passes for these type 1 tears. And we're going to get up towards the top of the ligament here. We'll take one final pass, and we'll come out. Occasionally, uh, if the tissue is really frustrating and it's, it's starting to pull apart, you can make an accessory incision above your medial portal and insert a grasper to hold the ACL on tension while you're passing your stitches. That's a nice trick to keep in your pocket if you feel like the ACL is starting to fray as you pass uh, each successive pass. You can see there the angle of the scorpion so we don't hit the wall and we're going to pull that out. So we're now in. You can see on that last pass right there we had a little, we just check and see if we're around. I think we're pretty good there. So uh, what we should notice on the, uh, the AM bundle is that when I exit at the end of it all, I've got 
a stitch limb coming out of each side of the AM bundle. And that's the way we want it to do. That's a little different than on the PL bundle. We're going to try and have both limbs of the stitch coming out towards the wall. Okay, now we're going to rotate our eyes down and in. So what we're going to do is make a low inframedial portal. And this is the portal that we're going to use to uh, make our anchor sites up in the wall. So you can see, and you just want to make sure that you can get up towards the footprint of the ACL on the wall. And there we have a nice shot of it. So we're going to then make an incision. Be sure not to cut the uh, meniscus here. So we're just going to come up with the knife blade and make our hole. Using the loop grasper, we're going to pass a loop of the fiber wire into the back of the knee here next to the PCL so that when we grab this through our inferior remedial portal, we don't put a lot of tension on the ACL when we advance our sutures out. So we can prevent ourselves from putting undue tension on the ACL remnant. Once we've parked both sutures out the inframedial portal, now we can go about uh, suturing the posterolateral portal. Again, we're going to start low. This time we're going to use a tiger wire so that we can have uh, good suture management. Again, we're going to take a low bite and come through the PL bundle this time. There's usually some robust tissue here on the PL bundle, and it tends not to come apart as much because it's protected by the AM bundle. We'll come back and forth like we did for the AM bundle, and then we're going to exit, uh, this time we're going to exit both of the limbs towards the wall because we want to pull that PL bundle right up against the wall with our anchor. Again, as we get further and up the ligament, we want to angle ourselves so that we don't uh, jam the scorpion needle right into the bone there. We're going to bring this lateral limb of the tiger wire medially and then back laterally and that'll be the last bite. So we're going to go back medial and now then we'll bring both of those limbs back lateral and exit towards the wall. We'll take the distal one first and this really is just about as many bites as I take with most repairs. Um, you can't do too many or else you start to clump up the ligament. You can push way up in there for the last bite, angle so you don't hit the wall, and pull that out. Now once we're done suturing the PL bundle, we're going to switch the sutures between the accessory portal so that we can then begin our suture anchor placement. So now we have the fiber wire in the AM bundle and the tiger wire in the PL bundle. And we're going to switch those two between the A inframedial accessory portal. So again, we're going to put a little loop of stitch in there so that we don't put undue tension on the ACL. And then we're going to bring the fiber wire out through the passport cannula so we can keep it out of harm's way for when we put our anchors in. One final look, you can make sure that you're not tangled and that the stitches are independent of each other. The next order of business is to uh, place our first anchor. You can see here we've got our cannulated 2-4 drill pin. Now a couple of things to take note of is we've got a nice laser mark right at the tip here so when you chuck it up you're right at the laser mark and then you know that you're going to the appropriate depth. In addition at the distal end of the 2-4 cannulated drill, we have a laser mark to make sure that you uh, know how deep you're going. And one final note is that you should make sure that the, the cannulation pin, the tip is all the way protruding from the drill. And the way you do that is make sure that, the, uh, that it's fully seated with the knurled end down at the base. And that will make sure that you have the sharp end of the pin coming out, which will help you uh, begin your drill hole. In addition, we have a nice uh, drill sleeve for this so that we don't wind up the ACL uh, while we're drilling. Now, with the knee in 115 degrees of flexion, we're bringing the PL femoral footprint towards us. And we can take our drill sleeve, localize ourselves, and then we can just drill up with our 2-4 pin. And we can bottom that out, as I mentioned, because we know exactly where we chuck to, so that we're real certain of where we are and how deep we're drilling. Next, we're going to use our 4.75 tap, and we're going to go right into that drill hole 
and we're going to go ahead and tap ourselves into the bone. It's important that you flex the knee up to 115 to make sure that you have the appropriate angle to enter into the wall of the femur. If you try and do it at 90, sometimes you can skive down the wall and you don't really get into the wall, but you skive down it. So you want to bring that PL origin to you. Okay, we've bottomed out nicely. Okay, so the first anchor up is an unloaded 4.75 uh, anchor. We're going to take the tiger wires and then pass it through the eyelet of the anchor. Okay, these uh, sutures are in the PL bundle. They're coming out the wall and we're going to go directly up. We're going to take the, uh, the tiger wires that we've threaded through the eyelet. We've brought the anchor in through our inframedial portal and we're going to go up and find that uh, 475 hole that we just tapped. Okay, now with tension on the uh, end of the tiger wire, you're going to get the slack out of the system, and then we're going to seat the, the eyelet, and then we're going to let go. We'll take the mallet and tap it in to seat it, let it find its own way and find its own tension, and then it's just a matter of seating that anchor, which we're all familiar with. You can see all of the fat bubbles in the knee, which is providing all of the proteins in there that we need to encourage healing. Now we can just pop out the handle and take out that core stitch. And I'll take the open cutter. Now we'll use the open cutter to cut that re repair stitch flush up against the wall. Okay, so we have our first point of fixation, and now we're going to get to that AM bundle. We're going to transfer the AM bundle sutures to the inferomedial portal so that we can go ahead and anchor that one up. All right, we're going to get our guide and our cannulated drill. We use the same drill for all of our anchor points, which is kind of convenient. This time the knee's in 90 degrees of flexion. And one of the things you want to make sure of is you want to avoid coming too anterior and trying to put your anchor point here. We want to get in the back here. And so that's why it's nice to have this, this guide that we can really kind of ride uh, pretty far back into the notch. It doesn't have to be right on the back wall like you do when you're doing a graft, but we can put it uh, back here on the ridge and so we can get good tension on that ACL. We're going to go ahead and drill it up. Make sure we're not sliding down the bone, uh, but actually going into the, the wall. So take your time. Don't push too hard. There we go. Follow that up with the tap. OK, this time we're going to use a preloaded 475 biocomposite swivel lock, and it has the fiber tape in it, which we're going to use for our internal brace. Load our fiber wires through the eyelet and follow ourselves up. Again, we're going to try and get the tension out of the system by cinching it up. We'll get the eyelet right up by the mouth of that tunnel, and then we'll let go of our hand and then we're going to an anchor it in there nicely. If you watch the end of the ligament distally, you'll see it tighten up nicely. Now it's just a matter of deploying our swivel lock. This time we've got to make sure we uncleat our fiber tape. We don't want to pull the swivel lock out. We'll take our handle off, remove our core stitches. Now occasionally you can use the core stitch to pass back through the ligament and tie knots if you need a little extra fixation. I've done that before. We're going to take our open cutter. We're going to cut our repair stitch now. And now we're just left with our ACL and our fiber tape. Now if you look Right now, you can probe the ACL and see it's very taut up against the wall. In fact, uh, almost every single time I've done this, after these uh, suture anchors are placed, your Lachman exam is almost always negative at this point. 
and now the fiber tape is going to be passed just as a backup fixation. Next we're going to pass that fiber tape distally. We want to get into the anterior third of the ligament and usually I'm about and I'm centered on the anterior third of the ligament and now we're going to drill up through that anterior third of the footprint. Okay, so the this is a cannulated 2-4 uh, drill, and so we can take this little knurled end and undo the cannulation and pass our nitinol wire right up through the same drill, which makes it easy so you don't lose your, your hole. The hardest part of the whole case sometimes is trying to thread this nitinol wire up the tail end of that 2-4 drill pin. We want to try and conserve as much of the anatomy as we can, so we uh, chose to include a 2.4 cannulated drill in the kit to minimize the amount of bone that we take. So now we're going to advance the nitinol wire out the passport cannula, and we're going to grab our fiber tape and bring it out with us. Before we advance this fiber tape, what we want to do is back up the drill pin by hand. So I pull it back down so that we don't get our wire tangled up on the teeth of that drill. So we're going to pull the drill pin out by hand and then we're going to pull the wire through and you can see here real nicely the, that fiber tape coming down and now we can see that fiber tape tensioning up along the ACL nicely. So there you have an internally braced primary ACL repair using the swivel lock ACL repair kit. You can s seat these fiber tapes how you like and you can see now the ACL is nicely tensioned against the wall. We've got the fiber tape to back up fixate it and now we're going to go ahead and put our last swivel lock down here in the tibia to anchor our fiber tape. We're going to tension that fiber tape with the knee in full extension and we're going to anchor it down with our last uh, swivel lock. There's a couple different options here. Uh, if, the pa if the bone isn't too hard, you can use that 2-4 drill pin and tap it real nice. Or here we have the, uh, the reusable spade tip and we can use that one if you have hard bone to drill a slightly bigger hole. We're going to use that just for demonstration purposes here. We're going to go right into the uh, bone of the tibia. Okay, the final anchor is a 4.75 uh, swivel lock, and we're going to go ahead and, with the knee in full extension, we're going to put nice tension on that tape. We're going to find, seat our eyelet in the hole, and then we're going to let go of the tape so that we don't over tension it. You want to make sure that you seat this all the way down. I have had one or two patients over the years where we didn't quite get it down and that the tail of that swivel lock irritated the patient um, right there down by the pez. So just to avoid troubles, make sure it's fully seated. And then we're going to go ahead and cut that fiber tape flush. Okay, so that completes our internally braced ACL primary repair using the new swivel lock ACL repair kit.